So, in relation with uh, this knowledge, in relation with the mental functions, all the functions are limited. So, with their limitation, this knoya uh, rasa sadhaka is only identifying himself with the mind and its function. Therefore, it becomes a bondage. The bondage is limitation, the limitedness. Now, the third sutra is describing this knowledge, the bandhana, as maya. So, maya, as we know, say, power of Ishwara, power of Shiva. So in the philosophy, this Maya word is used in different aspects. In different philosophy, they have different meaning. As uh, in Vedanta, this Maya word is very famous for the evolutionary power of Ishwara. So, Ishwara become Ishwara because of Maya. So, therefore, this Maya is called the great attribution power for Ishwara. It means when Maya is there, Ishwara gets the power of creation, power of maintenance, power of dissolution. So, Srishti Sthidi Samhara Shakti. And that Maya has three qualities. This three qualities of the Maya. The qualities means, this Maya is made of these three, three qualities. Sattva, Raja and Tama. So, this we can see in Bhagavad Gita. All over Bhagavad Gita, these three gunas are there. And each guna has different manifestations with uh, different qualities. So the manifestation of sattva we call sattika manifestation. This sattika manifestation is more uh, uh, related to or uh, cooperating with uh, jnana, knowledge. Sattva is revealing the knowledge. It is helping to know objects correctly. Therefore, the sattva part of the maya is uh, worshipped or respected. So we try to improve sattva. And then the second quality as raja. The raja is uh, like uh, we can say just opposite of sattva. It is not uh, revealing, but it is the power of action. So when Raja is there, 
the mind and the other instruments they do actions and tamas is ignorance dullness or inaction so the state of inaction is because of tamas like we have laziness inertia so they, there is no uh, thinking power so we don't want to think no anything so we, every day we feel some time like that so this is the power of uh, tamas and tamas is helping the state of sleep and sattva and uh, sattva and raja together works in the waking state so when we uh, examine all this in individual uh, as in individual level then we can take it into universal level if our physical body is working in such and such in way the same thing is replica in the universe so what is there in macrocosm is there in the microcosm and what is there in microcosm is there in the macrocosm so there is a relation communication so this is the theory we talk in vedanta generally and once uh, the mind realizes the nature of self the atma jnana after the realization of self the maya also disappears then there is no maya for that particular person who realized because he he realizing the self he knows there is no gunas connecting to me for any uh, in any condition i have no connection with the guna so he become gunatita if we have gunatita in bhagavad gita so he beyond he goes beyond all this gunas or the functions of gunas still he maintains the body mind and activities without uh, carrying the gunas or without uh, under pressure of the gunas that we can say in simple language so he is beyond that so here uh, in this uh, shaiva siddhanta there also the maya has different forms so we have already discussed one type of maya so here we see maya shakti it is called maya shakti so maya shakti is a power of shiva so worshipful shakti so maya shakti has many forms shakti chakra it is called shakti chakra so now uh, is a a worshipful respected aspect of shiva power of all manifestation this is maya shakti it is called and then the second level we have here is maya tattva tattvas so tattva means uh, the word meaning that normally translate elements and principles so the cause of creation whatever there the ask the cause that is called maya tattva so from that the principle or, or the causal form in that it is manifested after that <coughs> the material cause of creation can be called maya tattva and then the third maya comes here as now we are dis- going to discuss is maya granthi so form of maya like uh, we call it tamas tamoguna so this maya granthi is tamoguna tamoguna is ignorance granthi means not so not of insentiency or ignorance 
So, not identifying ourself as Atma or consciousness and misunderstanding the activities of mind, not knowing the outside object in it, uh, relation with the mind and all those. So, everywhere there is some sort of confusion. Uh, that is the knots, no, it is not uh, revealed correctly. Therefore, it is called Granthi. It starts from self itself, from there it goes to uh, mind, body, and outside objects. So, all the living beings have this quality of Maya Granthi. Therefore, we are in this world. So we were born to this world because of this Maya Granthi. And with this Maya Granthi, we do all the actions. Those actions will bring the reactions or, or the, the effect of the action, the fruit of the action. So then, to as karma, when we have too many uh, actions and reactions, it becomes karmas, the cause of rebirth. So we take rebirth. Like we are leaving today for tomorrow. And tomorrow for day after tomorrow. It is like that. So we are doing something today for tomorrow's benefit, tomorrow's enjoyment. Similarly, we are doing many things in this birth, with this body, for the next birth, next body. So we want the continuity of enjoyment. And we want it forever uh, without pain, without sorrow, without any uh, disturbance. But according to karma, it may change. Uh, that is not uh, in our hands. We can only perform the action the fruit will come its own because we perform the action and then the manifestation goes to bring the fruit like a seed so we plant the seed then the growing process takes place itself similarly this uh, maya granthi is very important to understand to remove all these obstacles Therefore, the Maya Grandi is said here like this, the uh, third sutra. Kaladinam tattvanam aviveko maya Kala means, uh, the word meaning is Small parts of anything is called Kala. So one small part. Here the Kala is, as I said, the, the material cause or the parts of the material cause. Different types of manifestation of material cause. So we have discussed this Kala in the first part, third sutra. The five types of kalas of maya we have already discussed. So kaladi nam, adi means there are so many other principles, other constitutive uh, parts of the manifestation. So it, there are so many parts, so all those are together is called kala. Tattva nam avivekaha. So, not realizing of this kalas, the reality or the, the essential nature of the kalas, tattva. So, what is kala and how it is work, how this manifestation comes, how one thought become action and action become uh, you know, the reaction and then how we get that effect of the action. So, it's all those things are manifested. So we are unable to separate all this. So kaladinam tattvanam. Avivekaha we already know. Viveka is discrimination. 
Aviveka is non-discrimination. So, uh, thinking or not knowing what is what is the Aviveka. So, that Aviveka is called Maya. That is why I said the Maya Granthi is Maya here. So, with this Aviveka, we make all this uh, karmas and not everything. Identifying with the body is Aviveka. Uh, making uh, separated things. Not knowing what is separated and how it is separated. So that is also the so separated thing as identical and identical thing as separated. All this confusion. So this all these confusions are because of Maya. Or we can say this confusion itself is Maya. Now this body is taken as individual self. That is an identification. As yesterday we discussed, actually the body, mind complex is separate from the knower. The body is an instrument for our action. And mind is also an instrument for our action. Sometimes mind works separately, body, mind combination works together. But uh, knowing this separation, we are able to identify ourselves with the consciousness. That is the idea here. If that is not possible, then the creation comes that is Maya. So, Kaladinam Tattvanam Aviveka Maya. So, non discrimination is Maya, but uh, about what? In this contest, Kaladinam Tattvanam. So, unable to know the principal, uh, principles and the uh, parts of the creation. So, not separating it. When we talk about creation in general, it should be taken as outside creation, external creation and internal creation, both. Because uh, in philosophies, uh, even the mental function is a creation. Because before external creation, the internal creation happens, then comes the external creation. As we plan something, uh, we make an idea with some form and then go for action. So before building a uh, anything, you plan it. So you how you want, before building a house, you plan it how you want it. So you will make the map, make the plan inside the mind. So after making it, you will, you yourself will do the needful changes and make it perfect. Then you will go to the architect and make a blueprint of it. Because he is specialized in making blueprint. Whatever idea you give and he will make the blueprint. And that blueprint is brought to a engin an engineer, civil engineer and he will see the blueprint. And again he will make a house his own. Because he will also have his own idea. And then it is there in the no, it is done, actually done. So therefore, it creation goes like that. Similarly, when we see something outside, unknown object, this first time seeing, so then we will make a, an idea about it, make a form of it, and try to understand the name of it, and the use of it, everything. So then, again it is inside. So the outside creation and inside creation goes go together, both go together. Therefore, aviveka maya, when we say, we take both. Okay. Now, how we can put an end to this process or this phenomenon, this maya phenomenon? So this is a, this is, uh, this is so-called bondage. Because we are uh, uh, having all the uh, problems with this. Uh, actually, uh, suffering is also there. Enjoyment is also there. Both are there. But uh, when we take both together, both are problems. So the how we can 
put an end to this phenomenon as Maya Aviveka, that is, the next sutra starts with that. Sharire Samharaha Kalana So here, the meditation is mentioned. Sharire, so in this body, Samharaha, dissolution of the tattvas, destruction of the tattvas. Kalana, Kala we already know. So if Sutra says, you can dissolve these Kalas in your body. Now, how you can dissolve this kala in your body? By meditation. By meditating on these kalas. To dissolve, if anything you want to dissolve correctly, methodically, you should know the creation, how it is created. When you know the uh, system of creation or the uh, uh, the step by step development of creation, manifestation of creation. You can take the opposite way and dissolve it. Like if you want to dissolve an atom or destroy an atom, but uh, dissolving and destroying is not possible. But uh, if you want to destroy, first you must know how the atom is constituted as an object, it's formed as an object. So you have to find which atom is there. So, then we can identify that and dissolve it. Here we have, then when we see the method of creation, like uh, the power of uh, Ishwara, Maya, has three gunas. Out of three gunas all this comes. And first the sound is created. The sound has the form of Akasha. So that is created. Uh, from that sound, little more uh, in the gross form, it manifests in the form of air. So sound and air both are there now. So air is uh, the experience of touch. So it is more gross. And then comes fire. The gases which burn or the manifestation. So that is called fire. The fire element. So not the fire what we see. This is a gross form of fire. The, just a manifestation of fire. Appearing of fire. So there is a form which is not seen. Like uh, this wood is having fire. But it is not seen. So this form of fire is created. And then water. Then earth. And in that earth our body and all other bodies of the manifestation. Now when we dissolve this body, this element, where we can dissolve, it can be dissolved in earth, earth elements. So the, because this body is constituted by earth elements, or the gases and the materials and minerals or uh, whatever the form of earth, that is there. Even this is scientifically proved. If you see the constitution of body, uh, what you say, the material cause of the body, you can find the same thing in the earth, in the wood, everywhere. The basic things are the same. All the minerals and all these things. Carbon, no, uh, is, uh, calcium and uh, potassium and all these things. So, it means there is some connection with the body and this. So, this dissolution. And now, after that, the earth is in water, in water form, like that it goes back to the sound form. So that sound from where it comes is called para, the ultimate sound. So it says, if that sound, the first created sound, or the unmanifested form of sound, is the uh, primary cause, or the ultimate cause of this creation, then that should be here. That, that should come uh, as a part, as a constitution of this. So therefore, it can be experienced in this body. 
because body has sound so if you go to this body and meditate on that we can experience that para sound the para nada in your body so once you know that the dissolution can be happen so therefore it says sharire sambhara kala it is so deep how you do this you can do everything in this body because body has everything now body has consciousness and body has mind things like that and the outside elements also body is carry so therefore that para sound if you by meditation by different type of meditation there are so many meditations so you do that so the body will dissolve all the kalas so once you know that now it is difficult to understand this way as i said although i just uh, explained it in a <laughs> simple way but uh, for an example more just for an instance you can take if you want to dissolve this wood there are two ways one you, once you can destroy it burn it and make it powder or whatever way it can, can you know by action you can destroy it and the second way of destroying it knowing the element of this just knowing the element of this so if we know this wood is made of these elements from uh, botany or uh, from subjects what you know about related to this so you know that this is made of this materials and this gases in this chemistry of this uh, what gases and you know, materials are there so if you know that you bring those things in your mind when we you see the object so that is dissolved now the scientist will only see or the um, um, uh, who studied the developments he will only see the original form of that because he will see everything as atoms because that is the origin of that so once you know the origin the manifestation or the product of that is dissolved mentally so now the wood is not wood for him. the cloth is not cloth because you know cloth is made of threads a thread is made of cotton so the when you see the object you want to know it really it is cotton but you use it as a uh, bed spread or whatever form it is you are using the form of that but the origin is cotton only it may be as in the form of shirt or the uh pants or uh, any any other form but you know that this is nothing but cotton so this is another way of dissolution so this we can do here the knowing the characters and the origin of kalas one can dissolve the kalas in himself so that is the dissolution here and this is dhyana meditation now the next uh, sutra is talking about it is indicating pranayama dharana and pratyahara and samadhi all together but no words are there huh? nadi sambhara bhuta jaya bhuta kaivalya bhuta prithak tani when we talk about dissolving the kalas in the body obviously we should know the manifestation of prana without that is not possible we know uh, the elements the earthly elements are there and then prana is also there water is there there are so many things so the nadi sambhara nadi sambhara nadi means the channels the nervous system of body is called nadi where the pranic energy is flowing the flow of pranic energy is called nadi in sanskrit 
So it is translated as here what did he say is not correct. The accumulation of channels is not correct. It's uh, the dissolve dissolution of nadi prana. So knowing how the prana works and control the prana. Okay? Dissolve the prana. So the pranayama is mentioned here. To control the prana or knowing the flow of prana, you should know the nervous system by practicing pranayama. So in pranayama we have various of pranayamas, ashtagumbhagas and uh, like Padanjala Yoga Darshana we have sushma, dirgha sushma, pranayama and uh, kevala kumbhaga. So there are so many pranayamas. So when mind is in full concentration or one pointed mind, it is beyond the pranic level. It means now prana is dissolved with the mind. As you know, when you do pranayama for longer time, with the, the pranayama practice we have uh, in Hada Yoga Pradipika, they have mentioned four time pranayama daily. So morning, and midday, evening and midnight. So four time pranayamas. Each time at least three hours. Like that. So that is the ultimate level of pranayama. So the prana, after this pranayama, so the whole body become uh, vibrating. No, it is like a, a pranic body. You will identify pranic body. So after this pranayama, you will feel that there is no need for breathing for some times. So you will feel the breathlessness, uh-huh. suffocation. Even after pranayama you will feel breathlessness and suffocation also you will feel. The suffocation is not all like suffocation is dangerous. But this breathlessness is the effect of pranayama. There prana stops. It means mind stops. What happens when you do so much pranayama, body takes the oxygen, whatever it needs for its function, for a certain period of time, certain span of time, like maybe for 5 minutes, 10 minutes, like that. In that state, there is no need, you don't feel like breathing. So, with full energy. Uh, in a relaxed form of concentration. So that state is called Kevala Kumbhaga according to Padanjala Darshan. But the Kevala Kumbhaga in uh, Atayog Pratibhaga is little different because it is with Kumbhaga you hold for a long time and without breath. No, that's, that's different. With Kumbhaga. So here, here you get sufficient energy, sufficient oxygen in the body for some time. So that longer, uh, the span of time, you are free from movements. So that is pranayama. There the nadi samhara comes. Now uh, the sadhaga will feel elevated. Maybe he, be, he may be floating in the air. It happens. Some, somebody had this experience, one of our friend. Uh, after doing pranayama, he just went up. Up. You know, he uh, talked with uh, the uh, ceiling and then came down, fell down. That was... Uh, yeah. Hmm. With the body. Left it. It, it. it happens. And uh, somebody was sleeping and he is also a special sadhaka. He is just uh, there in Tamil Nadu somewhere. He is practicing. He came here. He stayed here in Tapovan for two, uh, one and a half years. He was practicing some special type of pranayama and the sadhana. And after doing, completing here sadhana, he went to uh, Tamil Nadu. He stays in some good uh, He was a doctor, you know, uh, Ayurveda doctor. And he left everything and now he is practicing this. He is a good practitioner. So he also had this experience. 
So he was sleeping on the ground because he has a special uh, type of sleeping method and all those. Now, according to completely practice, uh, practice in the Hatha Yoga system. And there is also Siddha Hatha Yoga. It is connected to the Siddha system of Tamil Nadu. He is a good person. Uh, so he had uh, this experience. He was sleeping and just floated in the air. So it is possible. Hmm? Can you have these experiences of the pranayama? It is not possible because all this is connected to body. It is not only pranayama because you have to purify the body. Purifying the body, you have all these practices. Without that, it is not possible. You have to practice brahmacharya, you have to practice all these. So then only you can get yama niyama and all that. If you do just pranayama, something will happen, but uh, not exactly beneficial will happen. So that is what I say. So, uh, and this person with, uh, whom I am talking about, this uh, yogi, he will, uh, he, uh, is, uh, he will not reveal him, himself. If you see him, it is very difficult to see him, he, is, he will not come to, you know, he is not in contact with anybody. Uh, then what he does, he goes to any uh, jungle or any uh, forest and stays there. Hardly he eats anything. You know, some dry fruits or whatever he gets there. Twice in a day or weekly twice he eats. And then with water and like that he leaves. Even in Tabovanam he lived like that. We thought he will die because in Tabovanam like place Living without food is not possible. But uh, everybody insisted, so he was taking weekly twice one chapati. This means one parota weekly twice. That's all. That that took, he took because uh, people were afraid that uh, they were not allowing him to stay there like that. And uh, he has no physical problem, nothing. It's possible, no? How it is hard. And he is himself is a doctor. He knows everything. So he knows if something happened to body, some changes happen, he will do accordingly. And you know the medicine, the leaves and other uh, medicinal uh, plants. So he is an Ayurveda doctor. Uh, so therefore he will use so those medicine and uh, maintain himself. And he stayed uh, before going Gangotri, one year here in Uttarakashi. Because I, I have a friend there in uh, Kerala related to him. So he sent me here because he never touches money. He, he doesn't use money. Uh, after leaving everything, he left money and he will, no, practically he will not take money. So somebody should be there for helping him for bringing all these things. So he uh, gave my introduction and he came here and stayed one year here with me and then went to, to Gangotri for one year the, he stayed there and the third year he went to the step by step. Uh, so it's, uh, like there are so like yogis, he is uh, completely dedicated like that. But he will come after, uh, he said he has, uh, he will complete uh, uh, certain experiments and then uh, he will come to people, no, teach about yoga, whatever. He will come back. That is what he promised me. And he, he told me, don't uh, talk about me to anybody. So I cannot give him, I cannot give you his name and address. Can just, uh, I mention this sometimes when I remember. He's a good yoga. So like that people had uh, some experiences, like uh, mentally and uh, physically also is possible. <coughs> so this is Nadi Samhara. Therefore, uh, this uh, conquering these Nadis, you should practice. Pranayama methodically. And then comes Bhuta Jaya. So Bhuta Jaya control over the elements. Bhutas are elements. The control over elements. So we have different methods in uh, Ayurveda and Yoga conquering the elements. In Padanjala Yoga Darshana is also there. So that can be practiced. Then Bhuda Kaivalya, withdrawing of the mind from the elements. The Bhuda Kaivalya. It is a technical term, all these are technical terms. 
withdrawing from the elements. So now just uh, when we sit for meditation, we withdraw ourselves from the physical actions. So that is, you are withdrawing from elements. What this, uh, the scriptures say is, each elements have some effect on your mind. Like Ayurveda also has this theory. So, like water. Water has a cooling effect. That we know when we drink water, we have to cool. If there is less body in water, when uh, less water in body, you are dehydrated, then the body is warm and you will feel all sort of, you know, uh, burning sensations and uh, mind is disturbed and everything. So immediately you drink water. If like, you know, whenever you have too much emotions, like you are so angry and you are, you know, you are anger with the, you are reacting and you know, Oh, hala, hala. Then you drink a one glass of water, so it will be go cool down. Why? Because the brain immediately brain gets the water, so it, it cools down. Uh, just I want to say is all the elements have some effect on our body and mind. So here, taking that into consideration, the body, uh, the the yogi practices the withdrawal part of that. Now, uh, I know another yogi, he, he can live without water for months, without taking water. He hardly takes water. So, it, it is possible. Uh, he is still in his body, he is alive. Huh? And uh, so, that, that is possible. Okay, we, I asked him, why you practice like that? Because water is, everywhere water is available. So, you can drink water because water is not disturbing anyway. He says, no, there is no need for water. So, he has some other pranayama technique, like as he said, Shitali. He has a different type of uh, Shitali. In his uh, practice, he is, he is also uh, a follower of Buddha practice. So, there they have a system that they produce water inside the body. Without water, it can be. So one another uh, Swami is there in Haridwar. Uh, all Navaratri, now he is 80, 85, 86. Eh? All Navaratri, the, all the two Navaratris, uh, the Chaitra Navaratri and uh, Sarad Navaratri. He lives without water, without food. He lives in his room, without water, without food, doing some sadhana there. So it's possible. So how the practice comes? No, in this age, even 85, 86 can be possible, it means, despite possible, there are techniques. So, these techniques and these practices are uh, now, now, what is it, disappearing. There are no practitioners. We are only doing TTC and doing uh, <laughs> all this uh, uh, Kala and these things. There are serious practitioners are not there. So, they, this is called Bhuta Kaivalya, the separating the elements. Separately knowing the functions of elements or the effects of the elements. So, meditating on that. So, Vijnana Bhairava has so many meditations based on this. So, that can be practiced. Then comes Bhuta Prithaktva. This is Pratyahara. Bhuta Prithaktva. Separation of elements. So, withdrawing from the elements, then separation of elements. The elements here outside objects are separated. Now, uh, what this uh, yogi says, he says, we, when we drink water, we actually be drinking water, taking the glass and drink. He says, if you have uh, practiced powerful meditation or long time meditation, you can just think about water. If you think about water, the, you will feel that you consumed water. So that is what he says. Because I have never practiced this, I don't know the, what is the experience of that. That is how he says. So, same thing. And then uh, one, once he uh, showed the, his uh, special power of this meditation, he said, I will think about rain. 
and meditate for some time and in couple of hours the rain will come so that was his uh, <laughs> then he he did it and after 2 3 hours rain came only for this area that is it, that is special where he was where we were only that area the rain came and we asked this he said it's very simple technique i meditate that uh, the rain i meditate on rain and thinking about the rain and i uh, invoke rain and bring rain that's all but he is very simple he has no <laughs> no show man she pen like that he very simply says he is a simple yogi and a real yogi so i have seen him uh, practicing all the type of pranayamas so he is very good now he wants to leave his body and he is practicing uh, samadhi and all other steps so he have no connection with the people he is not meeting people he is just uh, alone so this is all possible this way this meditations whatever we uh, mentioned here in padanjali yoga darshana as well as here so uh, pranayama and dharana and uh, samadhi now after this pratyahara practice if you withdraw from all these elements the mind is stopped so that is called samadhi because mind is stopped and then there is no thought the thoughtlessness states comes that is samadhi so this is all summarized in this fifth sutra of the practice मोहावरणासी हाँ इमीडियटली द सूत्रा कम्स नाउ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट सिद्धिस हाँ वेन वी टॉक अबाउट दिस वी फील दैट लेट मी अचीव सम ऑफ दिस सिद्धिस इफ इट इज पॉसिबल लिविंग विदउट वाटर इज नॉट ए वेरी Uh, what is the need of that so much practice and then after that you just want to uh, live without water it's not only that because without water living without water has some other effects so this sutra says moha varana siddhi you see all these achievements the special achievements they are all moha varanas uh, these all uh, is uh, ignorance feeling power of ignorance the moha bhavana avanam is feeling no covering so therefore if you go after this siddhis when you will get some siddhis but you will be still in ignorance that is something special so we should go beyond this on the way you may get many siddhis let it be there but you forward for ultimate realization so in yoga sutra also one sutra is there samadhau sargaha uttane siddhaya so the siddhis of this these siddhis are obstacles for samadhi because you will be attached to this if any of the siddhis we get what would happen Oh, so you will be very happy with that, and you don't want to study anything else. So now I got the city, so I am everything. So if this feeling comes, you will not go beyond that. Therefore, moha varana. It is called maha moha in uh, Sankhya Darshan, because you will be satisfied with what you got. So like you no, know, when we practice the beginners, when practice asanas, so when we get uh, headstand. Oh, that will go. So I got guest and guest and today, so I have become a yogi. So that satisfaction, no. So it is something, you no, know, like that. I say, it's, uh, it's good that uh, you get some satisfaction. Also, inspiration will be there for practice, more practice. But that satisfaction should not stop your practice. So here it happens. When you get some siddhis, you stop practice. You will be after those siddhis. Therefore. Uh, it is a warning here be careful with uh, this siddhis so moha avaranat siddhi so that is one uh, understanding of this sutra 
So another understanding is so this is this siddhis are all manifestation of maya. The delusive power of maya, we can say. Delusive power, illusion, the illusive power. So after this achieving siddhis, the mind will be in more illusion. Because mind has so much power, you can just think about that and the thing will appear. Like I said, he was thinking about rain and rain came after a couple of hours. So, is it if, if that happens, then what would be the situation for a normal sadhana? Therefore, this is also a bondage. This is this. So, whenever some special siddhis comes, no? should be very careful. You should not touch that. You should not use that. If you use it, then you will be more attached and you will stop your studies and practice you will go after that. Therefore, I gave many examples because I have seen many siddhas. Uh, because in my uh, teenage, I was so much interested in these things and uh, going after the siddhas, swamis and everywhere, wherever I uh, heard about them. So I find a um, couple of them very really good practitioners and they showed me like many siddhis like this. It is all possible. So then after the, maybe three, four years I was all, with all this, then I found this is all like no waste of time. You are, waste, uh, you are just doing something to conquer uh, uh, food, conquer water and uh, uh, levitate from the air, only like, like this. So after all, what will happen? So you levitate from here and then so you cannot uh, travel all the way to Delhi and uh, come back. So, so you cannot just show that you did everything like this. Okay, this has this effect. That's not so okay. You are also satisfied. The people are also satisfied. Because when I was in school, no, I was showing little bit, uh, you know, tricks and uh, magics to my friends, uh, learning from all these uh, yogis. So, uh, <laughs> as you know, the students and our friends they were very happy. Oh, you become a siddha. Now you know you can do anything. So like that. So all tricks. So based on some tricks, some practice also you need that. Without that, that is not possible. Because I used to uh, predict the questions which are coming for the uh, no, exam. That was something wonder, no, those days. These days, uh, <laughs> it is possible in another way. So, <laughs> so we, uh, in, in two, three times it happened. Whatever I predicted, it came. So, I was very famous in that uh, level. And uh, I used to do that, let that little bit practice is there. It is possible like that when you study it, that is possible. But I, I have not given these techniques to anybody else. So I stopped it after my schools. But all these are possible with some techniques and some practice. There are techniques also we use to this. Therefore it is scientific. It's not uh, something magic or miracle we are doing. It's all scientific based on your mental power and all those things. But as I said, if you have so many fans and you have followers and appreciations and everything comes, you will be after that. So, after doing all this, one day it came to my mind, now I should talk, otherwise I will go after this and I cannot uh, learn all these things. So, one day I stopped going after this uh, yogis and the siddhas and then left for Himalayas. Sadhisaw came here. So, uh, these things, just to know, no, curiosity I went, because I had such friends, friends uh, circle, so they were all interested in such things. So, I was going after them. So, that is Moha Varanad Siddhi, therefore it is very dangerous. That is of course. On the contrary, they are more inhibiting. So that's sometimes like preaching. Because they know that they go be after the liberation, they will be less and less. You know, those that they are able to get pumps uh, into the city. Yes, correct. This, uh, that is why I said, when you practice the sadhana, in between, as a, as a side effect or by effect of the sadhana, 
some siddhis you will get you, you will get some siddhis some understanding some specialities but one, when we get that we should not uh, go after that this is like no uh, it says a by effect you get, get it and the aim of the sadhana should be the ultimate realization otherwise this moha varna will come you will be in that delusion and you will get more followers because the real jnani will not get more followers that is the truth what we can see because in real jnana there is nothing to give <laughs> so in here we have a wonder you know what is a miracles you know in hindi we say chamatkar ko namaskar so if you have some chamatkara some something you show you uh, know some uh, Uh, what do you say special achievements then people will follow you and uh, do namaskar otherwise no so in that case they use all this siddhis to attract people and guide them for this sadhana that is that is the purpose of that but we should not go after this that is what this sutra says okay we will continue with uh, next sutras om om नमः पूर्णमुदस्ते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओ शाति 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 गुरुमरा